Hey everybody, welcome to subscriber Q&A. This is going to be a little bit of a different subscriber Q&A because when I was working with the um, asymmetrical body and pants fitting video, I forgot to include something you can do with the waist start. So I want to sort of revisit that topic. And then I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to do a fabric haul from Metro Textiles. Now, initially I was planning on doing a separate video for um, the fabric haul because I wanted to make it special, but um, I caught COVID when I was in New York at ASG and I didn't really broadcast it because I had to teach the whole entire weekend after I got home and I was just hoping for the best in terms of feeling better and I do feel better. I just have this lingering um, low energy problem. So I feel like I just want to like lay down um, and rest. So I will be laying down and resting after I finish up with some things I have to do this afternoon, but I didn't want to cancel subscriber Q&A because I love getting together with you guys and um, it always is a fun time. So, and of course I'm also late today, so maybe some of you didn't realize I was coming, but I'm here and I'm going to just talk through the, um, talk through how to use waist starts for an asymmetrical asymmetrical figure first and then I'm going to show you my fabric haul. Hey LB, welcome. Um, so let me just show you what I'm talking about here. Um, I'm going to switch my view. Okay, so I have um, two back legs here and I'm trying to run through using some of these bigger pattern pieces I had printed for when I was teaching at the threads um, at in thre at threads for my pants fitting class. So I want to show you something um, that I forgot to mention, like I said, during Fit Tip Tuesday this week. And if you missed it, I showed how to adjust pants for an asymmetrical figure. And I think I still have those here so I can share them with you. That's probably a good idea. Okay, so this is what I shared on, um, here's what I shared with you on um, Tuesday. Okay, if you have a high full hip, okay, so here's an example of how a high hip would look like this. Hey Lois, welcome. Um, what do you do if you've got a significantly higher hip? Well, on Tuesday I showed that if it's simply a matter of if it's simply a matter of one leg is higher than the other, I showed that you can simply cut this part out and lift it up to make a higher hip, but then you'll have to have a um, left and right leg. Now another thing that can happen when you have a higher hip is sometimes that leg is also wider or sometimes you might have a wider leg, um, one wider than the other, so it's harder to pick out sizes. So what I would do is I would pick out the size for the one that your measurement is closest to and then you can actually slash your pattern and overlap to make the pattern bigger for the wider leg because if everything is agreeing with a smaller size except one of your legs is wider you can slash down the entire pants pattern like this and make it wider um hey vicky oh you didn't get a chance to watch fit tip tuesday yet well that's okay this is just a recap um and it's going to segue into what I forgot to share at Fit Tip Tuesday. So this was one thing. Then the next thing I showed was if you have a high hip that's being caused by a symmetrical waist, I showed how to actually um, 
make the side seam um, straight. And where did that paper go? I thought I grabbed all the papers. Oh my God, if you had any idea on the number of paper I have floating around in this studio for all the different things that I share. Oh, no, it's right here, sorry. Okay, so sometimes if you have a high full hip and it's caused by curvature of the spine like scoliosis, your side seams might not be straight. So this version shows you how to also raise the hip and push out the side seam or push in the side seam. So in this case, for the left side, you can see that the back needs to be wider because the side seam is over here and it needs to be narrower in the front because it's pulling over to the back like that. So we pushed in the front, pushed out the back and also raised the hip. So if you want, um, if you want to get all the details on how to adjust your pattern for a high full hip, whether it be from a curvature of the spine or from just having a higher full hip, that was Tuesday. Now I want to show you one other thing. If you're dealing with a larger leg, so if one of your legs is larger than the other, there's another thing you can do to fit. And I just want to show you that here. And then I'm going to show you my, we'll get to the fun part. I'll show you my fabric haul. Um, let me just stop and say hi to Sharon from north of England. I managed to catch you at the start this time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Victoria was a few minutes late. Um, and you knocked your drink over on your iPad. Oh, I hope your iPad's okay. And thank you for coming. I was also a couple minutes late today. And Peggy says, hello from Cincinnati. Hello, hello, hello. Um, okay, so if you've got a, a, a leg that's wider than the other, another thing you can do is on the leg that is wider, you can actually reduce your dart intake. And I'm going to... I'm looking at this now and I'm realizing this is a really tiny little dart to begin with. Let me just zoom in here. So let's pretend, um, you know, on the wider leg, you can actually come in and reduce your dart intake to actually take out some of the fabric that is on that wider leg and actually let me just make a let me just make let's pretend these were bigger darts like this and maybe let's say we had two on this leg okay so let's pretend that your darts look like that um, if you've got a wider leg and you need to you know you spread it um, to make the whole leg wider, you can change the shape of these darts to accommodate the wider leg by just letting them, you know, taking them in a little. So I'm just going to draw like this. You know, so you can take them in, you know, after you let the whole thing out. And then on the opposite leg you can actually take it in um, so you can actually I'm sorry you can actually let them out more let me just show you here so let's pretend you know if you on your smaller leg you can actually take in or let out the dart a little bit to actually take in more of the fabric. So depending on what your pants pattern is doing, um, you can do that. And you can make them longer to take in more of the fabric on the smaller leg um, if you need to do that. And I got this adjustment from the um, Jan Minot fitting book. So um, that's something that you can do to help fit 
a asymmetrical body. So I just wanted to share that with you too. You can eliminate darts, you can change the length of them, you can change the width of them. So always baste your darts in so you can play with um, what's happening. Now after I drew all this in and like I said I researched this um, and I got it from the Jan Minot book. I'm also remembering something else about bus, about waist darts. When you bring in fabric for a waist dart, you're bringing more fabric into the leg. So making them smaller also directs less fabric under the dart tip. So now I'm, I guess what I'm doing right this very second is second guessing myself. Hold on one second. I just want to share this with you. Let me see if I can... Of course, now I'm going to have to find it. Um, this is the Jan Minop book. I want to see where it says... For darts. Okay, so... Um... I probably should have marked the page on fixing this. Uh, so now, am I going to be able to find it? Testing the fit. Let me just see if I can find... All right, so now this is definitely like watching paint dry here. I am so sorry. Um, let me just see from the beginning here. If it tells us in the beginning, where did I see that? Um, Asymmetrical figure. Oh, okay, over here. So, um, right here, let's read this. Um, for the wider side, um, draw the A line parallel to center. Oh, no, wait a minute, that's figure 3 9 over here. So, for 3 9, for the narrow side, draw um, center line. And see, the narrow side, they're actually taking the dart in, and on the wider side, they're making it bigger. So I actually was doing it right. I was just um, screwing up my demo. So the wider side, you're going to make a deeper dart. So actually, these are in reverse. And I'm going to go ahead and credit that to the fact that I don't feel 100%. <laughs> All right, hold on one second here. Vicki says, Victor oh, Vicki... Um, Oh, Vicki, Peggy is giving Vicki some advice about her iPad if it's damaged. I really hope it's, um, it's going to be okay. So I read this fast, and then, but here's the thing. Okay, so wider leg, you need more fabric. So it may seem counterintuitive to make a bigger dart, and that's why I switched it in my mind. But as you bring fabric in, okay, you're bringing it in from the edge of the pattern when you make your darts bigger because you have to also let out the side, right? So you're actually drawing more fabric into the pant by making a bigger dart. And it doesn't need to be significant, but my point is you're dragging it in more and then you're getting more fabric flowing down from the tips of the darts um, on that bigger leg. So... Bigger leg, increase your darts. Smaller leg, reduce your darts because that will, it will actually get rid of some fabric on the side because you're making them smaller. So I am so sorry that I screwed that up, but um, that's the, the proper thing. I'm gonna draw right here. Bigger leg, wider darts. 
Why? Because it drags more fabric into the pant and at the tips of the darts, you're going to have more fabric flowing down your leg. Um, and smaller, smaller leg, narrower darts, narrow darts. All right. And then you'll have less fabric because you're going to get rid of some of the fabric here because you're making them narrower and that you'll have to take it out of your side seam. Okay, so that is a way to deal with wider and narrow legs. So, um, yay. Oh, and Victoria's iPad is okay, which I'm very excited about. Oh, and Tana says, thanks for waiting for me. I've been dragging this week too. Ugh, maybe there's something in the air in addition to how I'm feeling. So anyway, and I just want to show you in the Minot book here, just to wind this up, let me just get this really sharp so you can see. Notice when she's taking in the darts, she's only taking it in on one side to make it easy. So she increased wider darts by an eighth of an inch. So that's a quarter she's adding. And then the narrow dart, she took it in by an eighth. Okay. So that's how she adjusted her darts. I kind of like that instead of completely redrawing it. So that is my additional thing I wanted to say about um, about fitting an asymmetrical figure. I'm sorry I screwed that up. Now let's look at my fabrics from uh, Metro Textiles. Now the owner of Me Metro Textiles Kashi is this um, very nice man and I have a picture that I want to share with you. I took a picture of him and me at ASG in his store and of course it didn't occur to me to put that up on my um, you know up on my thing but there there's me and Kashi in his store and I think you can see from the background he has lots of fabrics in his shop. And what I want to say about him is he's very helpful in finding stuff. He knows where all his stuff is. So if you go into Metro Textiles, um, make sure you, you know, ask for help. And the other thing I want to say about Metro Textiles is it is not on street level, which means you have to actually go in a door and you have to go up an um, elevator to get to it. And I'm going to tell you the address right now. Um, his address is 265 and I'll put it right here so you can see. His address is, let me get this so you can read it. It's 265 West 37th Street, um, 908 New York, New York. So that means you have to go in a door at 265 West 37th Street and you go in there and you go up an elevator to the ninth floor. And then if you are not in, if you are not in the area where you can actually drive into New York City to see him, he also has a website. And I'm going to go to his website. Okay, so see, so you can keep, you can sign up for his newsletter. You go to his website, you can sign up for his newsletter and it's Metro Textiles NYC is his website. So I just want to share that with you. Metro Textiles NYC.com. Sign up for his newsletter. Um, he'll give you discounts and video updates. And then when you start shopping, you basically can scroll through hundreds of fabrics. All right, so that's his website. So I was kind of excited to share this with you guys because a lot of times you know, if I'm in, whoops, if I'm in New York, um, and they don't have a good website, then you can't also take advantage of buying fabric from them. But this, 
Metro Textiles, Kashi has a really good website. But I would definitely sign up for his newsletter because when we went there in person, um, he gave us a discount. So if you sign up and he sends you a, an email with a discount, then you could take advantage of that. Um, let me see. Let's say, uh, okay, so I'm going to talk about my fabrics in one minute, LB. Hold on. And then Sharon says, thank you for that we're coming over to New York in a year for our wedding anniversary. So we'll try to find it and pop in once we're there. Yeah, it's definitely worth a stop. And I will tell you, I found out about Metro Textiles because of my friend Katrina Walker, who was my roommate at ASG. She, he He's one of her go-tos. So we went there before the conference even started and I spent my entire <laughs> fabric budget in there, but I'll show you what I'm gonna get in a minute. Um, and Vicki says the upstairs thing was new concept um, to this prairie girl for the first time you went to New York for mood fabric yep mood fabric is another fabric store that's not on the ground floor so when you're walking through the garment district Google fabric stores in the garment district and you'll find even more that are not on street level so you have to go up elevators and find them and there's a lot of cool stores up there so um, that's a little tip for that and LB says it's confusing what we buy yeah oh I hear I feel you LB there's a lot of different fabrics so I'm gonna talk about the fabrics I bought at this shopping trip and um, you know I'll explain what they are and I'll explain what I'm gonna do with them and then um, you know maybe on another day I can talk about more fabrics more different kinds of fabrics um, so let's take a look at these I want to get it so you can actually see what they look like here I don't want to be overblown there I think that's better all right so let's start with this one um, this is a let me move these two out of the way this is a this was my luxury $50 a yard purchase and of course what happens is I feel things and then I have to buy them even if they're out of my budget because um, I wish I could give you feel o vision here um, this is a uh, a linen cotton cashmere blend woven fabric and it's basically a plain weave meaning it's got warp and weft so it's just going across and up and down and it feels amazing so I'm gonna be washing this it's kind of a, a, a blue gray color I'm gonna wash this and I'm gonna make the ultimate pair of Sorsha classic slim trousers out of this fabric um, I'm very excited to see how it washes up I'm going to wash it on gentle cold and I'm going to hang dry it and I will regroup with you on Friday during FabFit Friday to show you uh, how it washed but I wanted to show it to you before I washed it um, it's very very nice and soft it's going to make beautiful soft drapey pants fabric and I think one thing you can do is if you take the fabric and like let it hang like this you can kind of see how the fabric is going to drape and I can see this is this is going to have nice soft draping to it and I'm willing to bet you after I wash it because it has linen in there it'll even be softer after I wash it so this is my uh, linen cotton cashmere blend that um, I splurged for I bought two yards and I'm going to make that work for my pants it's 60 wide so it's plenty wide um, so that's this fabric and it's just again a cross woven nice fabric it's going right into the washer when I get done here and then this fabric now these last two fabrics are fabrics that are the same fabric they're both Italian linen and sometimes it's hard to find a really good quality um, dyed Italian print I mean not Italian but sometimes it's hard to find a good quality printed linen and I always look at the back to see if what's dyed on the front is reaching to the back because if I turn this over and the entire back was white that would mean the black on the top would fade more quickly and become more distressed more quickly so um, 
this is a very good quality linen fabric because when you turn it over you can see it's um, the black looks black and the white looks white so I think this is going to wash and wear really really nicely this fabric was actually wrapped around a dress form at the door and I had to buy it before I even got into the shop um, and it's fairly stiff so like when I hold this one up you can see it's very pokey um, so I'm I'm hoping that this does um, soften up after I wash it but this is a nice black and white floral print linen and then this one came in three different colors and this is a yarn dyed now I want to show you the difference between like surface dyed okay so this is surface dyed meaning the yarn itself was not dyed the surface of the fabric was dyed and it bleeds through to the underside of the fabric surface dyed print okay versus a cross woven linen so you can see here that the individual fibers are white and red so see I can pull them here so this is a a red fiber um, and you can see these fibers are pretty substantial let me zoom in so you can see so that's oops those are pretty substantial fibers to make the, this linen fabric so um, this came in blue red and I think a green color I absolutely love this and this is actually softer and I think it's softer because it's not surface dyed so um, this is these are probably going to be tops or dresses my guess is um, and of course these are really really nice so probably you're going to see these sewn up next summer because we're getting to the end of linen season and I have all of my fabric mart fabric linens I still have to work through um, during my bias series so I want to show you one other thing about this if you're following along with me you know I'm working on a bias sew along and I'm going to be making a v-neck bias top and dress and I met um, I'm friends with Julie Ann Bramson who is one of the authors of this book bias cuts blueprints and I put my um, an Amazon affiliate link in the description below this video and also fit tip Tuesday and I'll put it there on Friday as well because this book is amazing it shows you a lot of things about how to work on the bias how different fabrics work on the bias and then the whole premise of this book is they show you how to make a rectangle by cutting on the straight of grain making a tube and then making that into a garment so basically you end up with a tube of bias that you then make into garments and I may actually play with this and do like a little test of this during FabFit Friday but um, this book has been so much fun to go through there are beginner projects in here um, and then ideas for going a little more advanced there's a basic sleeve pattern in here um, lots of great tips for bias in here so that's going to be one of my new that's my new book purchase that I'm absolutely in love with um, all right let's see here uh, Vicki says I'm trying to imagine how that weave was done oh right because I know that's interesting okay so I'm pulling across huh so this is interesting because it is cross woven if we look at it closely hold on here if we look at it closely it's cross woven but the colors are going the same direction so notice there are both white or ivory and red 
going in this direction. And then if I look at the little pokies, they're also white and red. Yeah, that's very, now that you mentioned that, that's very cool. I don't know how they got the basket weave look. All right, I'm not dissembling this whole fabric to figure it out, but it does go this, like, so this red one right here does go straight across. Look, that intersection of those blocks. Oh, uh, maybe they, you know what? They doubled up. So see right here where this dark red is? There are two strands there. So I think when they wanted to make it look like blocks, they doubled up the whites or the reds. I'm guessing. Because right here on this thicker red, there are actual two, two strands of red there. I think that's how they did it. And over here, there's a wide white one. And again, there's two strands of white. So I think they use double strands to make it look like boxes. That's my guess. But this is very cool fabric. Is that light enough? Can we see it? See? Oh, too late. Too late. Okay. Um, all right. So let me just see here. Judy says, I've been looking for a nice drape fabric to buy for Sorsha pattern, but I haven't been successful. Does that shop have online site? Or, um, okay, so, hold on. So, let me just put in, it's, let me see if I can... I wonder if I can, no, see, this is a disaster for me. I have to remind myself how to share my screen with you so I could go live on my stream, and I didn't do that ahead of time. So let me just go back over here to, um, go. All right, so look at this very carefully because it's got the website right here. See, it says metrotextilesnyc.com is the website. So I'm very sorry that I couldn't figure out how to stream and share my screen so we could go to the website together. MetroTextilesNYC.com is their website. Um, otherwise, if, you know, otherwise, there are other places that you can get nice fabrics. I did get some nice fabric at um, Fabric Mart Fabrics as well. And I think I would just look for something nice and soft and drapey, like um, any kind of crepe fabric would be really nice that's soft and drapey. Or um, I have some rayon. Let me show you this. It's a huge piece of fabric, so I can't possibly have lost it. Hold on. Okay, this fabric right here is a fabric that I bought from Fabric Mart. Let me show you this. This is a rayon twill. So a rayon twill would be nice and soft and drapey as well. And you can see this is super drapey. This would make nice soft pants as well. This is a rayon twill. Very soft and drapey. I got this at Fabric Mart. Um, let's see. Oh, Judy says, I took her class in Puyallup, um, and you have her books. Yep. She is such a nice person, and, um, and she's so talented on the bias. I'm very, very excited. Oh, uh, Sharon says, that's pretty fabric. Got it. Thanks. How much for one adult pants? Okay, so... If the fabric is 60 wide, you can get away with two and a half to three yards of fabric. If it's only 45 wide, you'll need more than that because it, um, because it, um, you know, you'll be able to fit, you know, measure your length of your leg from the waist to hem and you'll need two, you'll need two lengths of that if you can't overlap your pieces 
Um, so, oh, and I can show you here. Here's my Sorsha Classic Slim Trouser size chart so you can get some idea. So if you're in the sizes 2 to 8, 1 and 3 quarters, sizes 10 to 16, 2 and a half, and 3 yards for 18 to 24. But if if you're 45, you need you need two and a half for the smaller sizes, three for the middle sizes, and three and a half for the larger sizes. Uh, Karen says she's late, but she was buying fabric at Metro Textiles. <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool little store. So excellent. All right, so all right, so that's my fun little subscriber Q&A uh, for today. Um, on Friday, I'll be talking about bias. I'll be talking about how to add ease. If you've got a 40 bust and like a 50 something inch hip, so like if your hips are significantly larger than the top of you, I'm going to show how, how to do that without making the top too big. And guess who told me that? Julianne. So she is my queen of getting up to speed on... Um, she is the queen of get, me getting up to speed on bias. And um, thank you guys so much for showing up and hanging out with me. I have been a little bummed out that I'm still not feeling 100% because I've been spending a lot of time on the couch. My husband and I are re-watching the show The Wire. So <laughs> that's what I've been doing when I run out of steam. But I really wanted to come on and spend a little time with you guys today because this is one of the highlights of my week. And I'm really looking forward to Friday for Fab Fit Friday. So um, I hope to see you then as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial, even though I screwed up the darts. Um, so remember, bigger darts, draw more fabric into the pant, making more fabric go down your leg. And smaller darts drag in less fabric, less on the legs. So if you have a wider side, bigger dart, more fabric, smaller side, smaller dart, less fabric. Um, <clears throat> all right, Judy says, I will email you a knit pattern question. Hope you're feeling better. Thank you, thank you, and please do email me questions. Um, and I will answer them. Okay, so I think I'm gonna sign off for now. Um, but I really do want you to know, I really appreciate you guys all hanging out with me. And um, thank you for joining me, and I will see you on Friday at 1 o'clock live for FabFit Friday, working on the bias v-neck top, and I'm going to also show you how to do more pattern things on the bias. All right, thank you guys so much, and I'm going to sign off now because this is where I start to ramble, so I'm going to sign off. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>